This video is on solving quadratic equations with imaginary solutions. Our first example says, find the roots in simplest a plus b i form. And our equation is x squared plus 13 equals 6x. So the first thing is, when I see a plus b i form, I know that that's talking about imaginary or complex numbers. And I know that it's usually going to be found with a negative number underneath the radical. And simplest a plus b i form is kind of like simplest radical form. Whenever I see that, I know I have to either use the quadratic formula or I need to complete the square. So let's take a look at our equation x squared plus 13 equals 6x. Now remember, anytime we have an x squared, no matter what type of solving we want to do, we're going to set it equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 6x on both sides. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 13 equals 0. And as I said before, simplest a plus b i form is my clue that I need to use the quadratic formula or completing the square. So for this example, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is on your reference sheet. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So remember, this goes in alphabetical order as long as you have it in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my quadratic formula. Negative b and b is negative 6. And anywhere we're putting in something, we're substituting, we want to use parentheses. So I have negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13 all over 2 times 1. So I have x equals minus negative 6 is going to give me a positive 6 plus or minus the square root. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything that's underneath the square root into my calculator. So on my home screen of my calculator, I'm going to put this in exactly as I see it. Open parentheses, negative 6, close the parentheses, squared, minus 4, parentheses 1, parentheses 13. And I get negative 16. So that's underneath my radical. And then in my denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. So now I want to simplify this. So I have 6 plus or minus. The square root of negative 16 is 4i. Because remember, anytime we have a negative under the radical, it becomes an i over 2. And then my last step is just going to be to simplify all of this. And if you take a look at what I have, all three of those numbers are divisible by 2. So we get x equals 3 plus or minus 2i. And remember, this is really two solutions. It's x equals 3 plus 2i, and it's x equals 3 minus 2i. Let's take a look at one more example. Solve the following and express your answer in simplest a plus b i form. So once again, there's my phrase that tells me I need to use the quadratic formula or I need to complete the square. So this one I'm going to use the quadratic formula again, but then I will also show you um, completing the square as well. So my first step is to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 7. And if I'm plugging into the quadratic formula, it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root. And now I'm going to put this in my calculator. What's underneath the radical? Remember, we don't want to put the actual radical into our calculator. So I have 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7, and I get negative 24. So that goes underneath my radical. 
and in my denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. So, unlike the last question, I can't just take the square root of negative 24. So I'm going to break this into two radicals. I'm looking for a perfect square that goes into 24. It's going to be 4 and 6, and I'm going to keep that 4 negative. So I get x equals negative 2 plus or minus. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. I keep my radical 6 over 2. And my last step is to simplify. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up that radical, and I want to look at the other three pieces. Is there something they're all divisible by? And they can all divide by 2. So my final answer is x equals negative 1 plus or minus i radical 6. So now what I want to do is I just want to do the exact same equation, except I'm going to show it to you by completing the square. So I'm going to just copy the first piece, because our first step is always the same, set it equal to 0. So when I'm completing the square, I'm always going to put a plus blank and a minus blank. The plus goes inside the parentheses, the minus goes on the outside. To fill in that blank space, it's b over 2 squared. So in this case, it's 2 over 2 squared. So we're going to get 1. So I'm putting 1 in each spot. So it's inside the parentheses you're going to factor, and it's always going to be something squared. In our case, it's going to be x plus 1 squared. And then I'm going to combine these two pieces. Negative 1 plus 7 gives me plus 6. So now I want to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides. So I get negative 6 equals x plus 1 squared. And then I'm going to square root both sides. Remember, whenever we square root, we get a plus or a minus. And then the squared and the square root cancel each other out on the right side, so I only have x plus 1. That negative under the radical is going to come out as an i, and you can't square root 6 and you can't break it down. So I just have plus or minus i radical 6. And then our last step is just to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get negative 1 plus or minus i radical 6. So there you go. That's the same answer that we got by quadratic formula. Either way, you get the exact same answer.